Richard, I want to welcome you to the Jesus Garcia podcast. I've been a fan of yours. I've been watching your videos for a while. I know you're doing some pretty amazing conversions out there uh, in the UK and England. And uh, and what? since uh, you... Wales, not England. Wales. Oh, really? Is that what it is? Oh, yeah. Get okay. that right. <laughs> oh, no way. There's, there, there's a difference. Okay. You're oh, going to yeah. have to school me because I don't know what's yeah. Wales. Uh, is that it, it, separate? It, uh, uh, I'll quickly school you. So okay. the UK is uh -huh. the United Kingdom. It's made up of Scotland, England, Wales, and Northern Ireland. Ah, okay. So it's a separate island? No, or is it no, no, separate? No. It's in the same region, but it's it's just Correct. a... Okay. Yeah. Same body of land, but a different region. Yeah. If, if, ah, you, okay, if, okay. if you call the Scottish English, you oh. better have fast, fast running legs. That's all I'm saying. I see. We're going to have problems there. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it's like people calling us all Mexicans, right? But some, some of us are Salvadorians and Nicaraguans and, you know, it's... It's it's all, we're like, all, we're United, all the same people, but, uh, you yeah. <laughs> know. The United States is made up of lots of states. Yeah. The United Kingdom is made up of lots of little states as well. Scotland, England, Wales, Northern Ireland. Wales, that's right. That's See, that's what happens. I got to go visit because that's the reason why I don't know because I've never been out there, right? I've never been so, to Europe. Come on, come um, on with the just, just yeah. make sure you bring some like, really warm clothes when you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not my regular T-shirt. Oh, uh no. So yeah, so you're in Wales and you are uh, you have a shop, and you create yeah. a lot of conversions, right? You yeah, convert. Pretty much, I would say the the largest uh, conversion shop in the world now. I mean, we're converting like uh, probably about a hundred cars a year. Um, no way! Like, That's a lot of cars. Yeah, yeah, we've got about sixteen cars in the workshop at the moment. Uh, getting tell you why would it, why don't I just show you? <laughs> what? There you go. Uh, so yeah, we we got about sixteen cars in the workshop at the moment. Um, there you go. Everything from like oh, we're, we're all that. classic car nuts. So it's everything from uh, down in the corner over there. We've got a, a Land Rover Defender. Land Rover. Um, just underneath the cover here is a Maserati Ghibli. Uh, this underneath the covers, believe it or not, is a DeLorean. Um, wow. We've got a, a vehicle going out uh, on Saturday here. That's a finished Land Rover. Uh, where are we? Over in the corner, there's a Porsche 944. Uh, there's another Porsche behind this uh, bit here. Uh, we've got another Land Rover about here. Uh, there's a Mini. A Mini? Uh, don't need, uh, there's a BMW CSI, uh, a Range Rover. That, that was about the third vehicle I ever built, uh, like, I don't know, three years ago. Uh, that's just back for a bit of TLC at the moment because I've not seen it in three years. Oh, and I see a bus over there in the corner. Oh, yeah, I thought you might see that. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we've got a Mini there. That's getting a Tesla drive unit. Uh, <laughs> Tesla is, drive unit out of all things. Uh, yeah, well, only a small, small Tesla drive unit. <laughs> it, actually, it, fits like, it fits like a glove. Um, really? Now, this is a car you've never seen before. This is what's called a Gordon Keeble. Very rare car from the 60s, um, a UK um, uh, car. That's a Gordon wow. Keeble. Actually, has a big American V8 that uh, was originally in that. That's wow. Long in it. And yeah, as you've already spotted, whoop, the there it is. BW bus. It's a yeah. camper. Yeah, it's, Look it's at that. beautiful. It's, it's all original. And then we got a, a little bit of collection of finished cars over here. So we got. Oh, uh, there this, you go. It's a Beetle. That's the Beetle we converted in a day uh, last week. So we <laughs> converted that to a day. Uh, and then we've got um, an Alfa Romeo Spider, MG Midget, uh, Fiat 500. Uh, that's actually um, yeah. Dev Patel's Fiat 500, the actor. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, Dev yeah. Patel, he was in Slumdog Millionaire and Lion and some cool Yeah. Mm -hmm. and then just behind that is uh, a BMW Assetto bubble car. So, wow. Yeah, I think probably 15, 16 cars in here at the moment. So it's wow, cool. that's crazy. You guys are full production. And not only is are you doing these conversions, but you also have some kind of like video production, like a, a TV show or series or something? Yeah, yeah. We got, oh, and we've got pretty cool chargers as well. It's like, a, oh, look at that. <laughs> um, yeah, so we got a TV show, um, which is weird. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't expect to uh, be doing a TV show like uh, about three years ago when I started converting cars in my garage. So yeah, that. Wow, that a, one, um, all this has happened in three years. That's crazy. I know. 
Yeah. Seems like, only, seems like only yesterday I was uh, phoning up Uncle Uncle Michael, as I call him. <laughs> Michael Bream, yeah. Just <laughs> yeah. to talk about converting uh, a Beetle I had at the time. And yeah, that was in my garage. And then it's just turned into, uh, see you guys, uh, turned into this. And I've got a TV show. We're shooting the second season at the moment. Uh, it's called Vintage Voltage. It was out on uh, Multi Trend in the US and uh, Quest uh, TV in the uk and i believe it's on some international channel apple tv has it on there as well so oh so, apple tv yeah. i can watch it yeah because yeah. i haven't been able to catch a an episode but i do have apple tv because i don't know i refuse to join all these channels <laughs> <laughs> i was like i was in netflix already what do you mean i have to now join everything yeah. else <laughs> there's ten, 10 episodes in season one uh, i think we got everything from um there's a uh what is there? There's a motorbike in there. There was a Ferrari in there. Um, there was uh, a, a Porsche Speedster in there. There was uh, some pretty cool builds. Lancia Fulvia. Um, there's wow. all sorts. Yeah, really cool cars. How does so? How does that work? Because okay, so for those of you who don't know, converting a car it's a quite a bit of work. I I know you you said you got this Beetle done in a day, but. I mean, Beatles are the most converted vehicles on the planet, right? Like everyone's done one or whatever. So at this point, yeah, okay, you you have everything worked out. You put the battery box over there. It's got, you can kind of work it out. And but typically, like a new car that you haven't done, it's a ton of work. It's a ton of engineering. There's a ton of pre-fitting and you know all that stuff. So it's a lot of like actual work. Yeah. How do you? do a tv show on top of that because so, a, a tv show from the production side it's equally the amount of work right so that means you have to have separate crews it's a it's a huge crew that usually takes to make a production i mean you you're talking about it could be anything between five to 30 people you know what i mean depending on the productions and how good uh their sure. their the showrunners are or whatever um how fact, do you, how do you, you're just missing one of the camera guys walking out the door there now. So. Ah, <laughs> I see. Do they live there with you? Yeah. Almost. I mean, what, what happened was, I mean, I was happily um, converting cars with customers and uh, we were getting quite a lot of traction on social media. Where I noticed there was a lot of interest out there for what we did. And I, I, I haven't really watched TV in a long time. I'm like you, I've got Netflix, I do on, on demand stuff. But I remember the, the days of like watching Wheeler Dealers when it was still back in the UK with Ed China uh, in it. And, you know, I loved those programs because they were into the nitty gritty of like nuts and bolts and changing a bearing and torque wrenches and things like that. And I thought, well, this, if, if somebody videoed uh, and uh, got a TV show out of what I did, I would watch it. Because, you know, it's like the next generation of wheeler dealers. It's kind of electrification, but a little bit of uh, classic cars, a little bit of modern technology, and a little bit of like, you know, zero emissions and, you know, saving the planet. And you put all that together, and I thought that would make a good TV show. But the problem is exactly as you said, Joe, it was if I did a TV show, TV shows are usually made up. They're yes. usually scripted, they're, they're yes. not real. The whole gas monkey garage, uh, wheeler dealers and stuff, they're not, it's not real. It's not real mechanics doing work on real cars that is then sold to a customer. I run a business and what I wanted was what's called an obdoc, an observational documentary on my business, running a real business with real engineers, real fabricators, real customers. The, the cameras are there, they film us, but they don't you know, stage everything and script everything. Whereas most other TV shows out there, they are. And that's why they follow the same format. You, If you've watched one like Gas Monkey Garage type thing, you've watched them all because they are all the same. You know, they yeah. all have big tattoos on and they have like, you know, some cool a actors that are just pretending to do hot rods. That's yes. not us. <laughs> We're, we are warts and all. You film us building a real car. And that's what I wanted was a minimum impact to my business for a TV production company to come in. And luckily we got Attaboy Productions. Now Attaboy Productions, they did Wheeler Dealers for about 13 years before it moved to the States. And those guys are well cool. They are really on board with what we do and they don't impact us too much. And they've been filming today as well. And yeah, it's just worked really well. So yeah, it's very strange to say I've got a TV show, but Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, that is that is really weird because we 
toyed with the idea, right? I, over there, I was over there with Michael, and I shot a pilot that was for Velocity TV, right? So the Discovery Channel. And we would sit down and try to figure out how we would do this. But at the end of the day, it was like producers wanted to shoot a TV show, and they want to optimize the whole production to shoot the TV show. And we're like, well, no, this is, this is not a – this is not just for the cameras. This is an actual project for a customer. This you can, you have to meet somewhere in the middle, but mostly no. There's there's no budging when you have to re turn this into a, a real customer, right? Yeah. So so we could never really get together and meet in the in a right place that we can make it happen, right? And so at the end of the day, they were they wouldn't budge and we wouldn't budge. So we so I think it just never went anywhere. Uh, well, I, I, I was the same. I mean, I'm, me and Michael um, are very similar in personalities, and we we're, we're car guys. From fundamentally, we're car guys, and we're also we know what we want to do with having fun building electric cars and stuff. And you know, when, when I say no, that's it. That's where it is. You know, I, I'm not going to give way to that. And we were kind of the same. Uh, you know, we had various different channels that um, the production company pitched to. Uh, and they, you know, would feedback to say, oh, but if we can do that, can we have the studio like down south somewhere else? Can can we can we do? It? And uh, you know, it was a flat no. You take it or leave it. You know, it's an observational documentary on what we do as a business here. And yeah. you know, here's, here's ten customers. There's ten customer journeys. Car comes in, we meet the customer. It gets converted through the journey. We drive it at the end, shake hands. Job done. On to the next car. I and, see. Uh, yeah, we, no we drama. Were... No drama. No throwing things around. No, 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 no. Fights no. and uh, yes, you know. exactly, exactly what I said. He didn't want no, no <laughs> false drama. No false like um, deadlines. Oh, we've got to work through the night because like the customer's picking up tomorrow. Who believes that crap? Honestly. How about the girl? No girl with the big boobs, you know, no, scantily no, I, clad. I, unfortunately, no, unfortunately not, Jehu. No, oh. I, I tried. I tried, but no. No, I didn't want any of that. And you know, having having like the tattoos all over my body and like all that <laughs> muscle and stuff. Believe me, there's no muscle and there's no tattoos under this. <laughs> oh no, man! It's if all it, real. If it was, if it was the producers that we were dealing with, you would have shown up drunk half the time and. You would have yeah. been crying and, you know, Especially yeah. It was Discovery Channel that um, commissioned it. So, wow. Um, Discovery Channel, um, Discovery Channel Network or whatever they're called. Um, so in the U.S. it went out on Motor Trend, which is part of their. Um, yeah, uh, so Velocity TV turned into Motor Trend. So yeah, it has yeah. the same people. That's so weird. They uh, said no to us, but they said yes to you. Hey, it's Those the looks. Bastards. No, I got the looks, man. You got the looks. You got the sideburns. That's what it is. I didn't have side. Yeah, they basically told us that we that it was too early and people were not watching. Americans did not watch it because it aired. So I, I shot a, a, a half, uh, you know, a pilot episode and it aired on TV a couple times and they they just came back and they were like, meh. And so then I I was able to post that on my channel and now it almost got a. a it's got like 900,000 views right now. It's about to pass a million views. And I'm like, well, you know, it's like, you guys, I don't know. You know, to me, that's uh, enough. I, <laughs> I think you're right, J.O., you're right. Uh, it, it's too early in the U.S., but in mm -hmm. Europe, we're ahead of the game with EVs as far as, like, electrification and adoption of electric vehicles is concerned. I mean, if you're looking uh, towards Norway, for instance, I mean, that's like 85% of all cars over there sold in the last month were electric, you know. That's yeah. crazy numbers. If you talk to Americans, they're like, you know, 1% or less uh, cars are sold uh, that are electric. So if you pitched it solely from America to Americans, I think, yeah, they'd probably say, no, it's too early. It's but too I early. was... You know, I, I was lucky because, uh, you know, we're a European, like a uh, UK based uh, company where electric vehicles are ahead of the game compared yeah. to the US. And it was picked up by a US network. So, I mean, yeah, I think that's probably the difference is we, we were coming at it from a UK towards the US perspective, whereas you were kind of like US to US people. And yeah, yeah. It, it, I mean, the feedback we had from the US um, Discovery Channel was, you know, it did well. But it wasn't, you know, a huge success. But in the UK and other markets, it was a raving success. So, wow. Uh, it, it, I think the US will follow it. It'll come in the US. But uh, we're late. We're late to the game. Um, because you got Tesla, you've got like uh, Lucid over there. You have got the the companies yeah. and the innovators over there. But the mass adoption is just. A little bit behind. It's new cars too, so it's not the classic like the the classic car people are just still petrol heads over here. So you know, 
they those who we were trying to pitch to, right? Because it was Velocity TV, it's car people. Yeah. And they're like, electric the cars? Game. Yeah, <laughs> get out of here. You know, your stupid batteries and motors, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, oversized golf car. Um, but you guys have, I mean, those are pretty amazing vehicles you have there. So there's a pretty healthy uh, culture of ele uh, classic cars in, in the UK and uh, oh, yeah. right I mean, in England. It's not just UK. I mean, we, we ship uh, cars to LA. I mean, um, uh, Dev Patel's Fiat 500, that's going to go on a ship back to oh, LA. Oh, no way. Oh, so you're yeah. converting one for, for LA. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there's another car in there that's going to the States. Um, so we ship um, all over from South Africa to Australia, New Zealand, um, uh, to the States, um, Caribbean. Um, so it's, it's quite international, but we're, we're obviously, you know, UK based. So most of our customers are UK or European, uh, focused, but we do get a lot of international clients nowadays. Wow. That's yeah. And especially with the TV show, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's a big yeah. advertisement. I mean, you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm, I, I thought, it would actually really explode the business with the TV show, but I've not seen that, if I'm honest. Really? I, no, no. I mean, I, I've seen it grow, and I've seen it, like, pick up a little bit because of the TV show, but was it because of the TV show, or was it, was it just the mass adoption of electric vehicles is starting to really get going now? So yeah. I, I didn't see that huge, like, oh, my God, the TV show's out. It's crazy. Everybody answer the phones. It didn't really happen like that, um, which I'm pleased about. I mean, we got <laughs> You were we, already we, swamped. Yeah, oh, yeah, we, we got forty-five cars in the uh, waiting list. It's um, wow. So, yeah, what is, what is the timeline on the waiting list? Because I know Michael tells people five years. He's like, nah, <laughs> come back in five years. Um, because Michael thinks more like he doesn't want to do the conversion shop. He wants he wants to engineer all these cool projects, right? And I get it because yeah, it's converting converting. It's it's uh, I mean, it's hard work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dealing with customers and stuff, right? It's like, uh, and yeah. then every, every new car that comes in, every customer wants to do the weird car that they have, you know, which is cool. They should. Um, but you're yeah, like, I'm starting uh, from zero kind of thing, you know? We, we, I think, um, Michael does a lot more web shop than we do. I mean, we don't really do much web shop. I mean, oh. uh, I, I would, I, I would hazard a guess at, uh, Michael's, uh, business is probably 80% web shop, 20% like conversions. We're probably yeah. the flip. We are 80% conversions, 20% like parts that we ship out to customers. Ah, I see. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean the, the conversions, um, are, you know, it's uh, it's not easy, that's for sure. Otherwise, everybody would be doing it. Yeah. Um, you know, the conversions are difficult from um, a number of standpoints. From the fabrication point of view, I mean, how are we going to fit these batteries where batteries didn't fit before? Uh, how are we going to safely secure them? So we've designed our own battery um, uh, boxes uh, for different types of batteries from, you know, uh, um, Tesla batteries through to Cal batteries through to um, LG batteries. We've got our own designed uh, battery box internals that hold, hold them all securely. So you've got the fabrication um, stage of figuring out where everything's going to go. Then you've got the electrical sort of things of like, okay, now we've got the batteries in there. How are we going to actually wire from here to there and cable this from there to there? And, and that all of these is, um, you know, uh, you, you've, you've got this, safety overhead all, all the time of like okay anybody can throw some batteries in a box run some cables from a to b and make a car go but if you're handing that over to a customer who's yeah. maybe never had a classic car before and never had an electric vehicle before and certainly um you know just wants to get in it and drive it like a tesla you need to make sure that these things are reliable safe idiot proof um, and, and just essentially put a lot of R and D time into making sure that what you're producing as a, a package is bang on. And that's the bit that I enjoy doing. I mean, Michael's like it as well. He's an engineer that likes, you know, coming up with new solutions and uh, overcoming problems. I'm the same. I really like to have that challenge of like, you know, a new car coming in that we've not done before. Okay. How are we going to do this? Um, yeah. But it's always with that overhead of like, you know, when this goes out the door, if it's going to like America and it breaks down, we got a yeah. problem. So yeah. we need to always put a lot of R&D into making sure that the stuff is super, super reliable and not have any uh, uh, comeback or, or very little if there's something that can be sorted out. 
um, and uh, make them safe. So that's kind of the, always our overarching thing in the back of our minds when vehicles go out, which is why we put on new vehicles we've never done before. We put, we put like, you know, 500 miles on them, 1,000 miles and sometimes to test them. Uh, over hot hot months, uh, cold months, because obviously we got a we got a climate. Unlike you guys, we got <laughs> climate. You know, we can we can look out the door sometimes and have three foot of snow, and then other times, you know, it can be like uh, you know, shorts and t-shirt and shades uh, weather. Uh, you know, so we got to account for the fact that batteries need to be warmed up, cooled down, etc. Whereas you got a very nice ambient temperature over in California. Yeah, it's just always sunny in California. Yeah. Uh, and even when <laughs> it's not, it's sunny. Send it to us. Send it to us. <laughs> yeah. So what did you – it's interesting that you said you're putting a Tesla motor on that Mini, uh, and then you're talking about reliability. Are, are, are we there now with these Tesla motors, with the hacking? Because, by the way, those watching that don't know, test, well, these are motors that are taken off of a Tesla vehicle that it's either on an accident or whatever. And so then what you have to do is you have to hack it. You have to either change the hardware and then use your own software or flash, you know, take the old software off of the equipment and put new ones. And there's a couple of different ways to do it. Right. And people are doing it and they're doing these controllers and stuff. But the problem is, I think that I, I have heard from other shops is that it's, it's still kind of a hack. It's still early a, a, the stages and it's still kind of unreliable to some people believe that. Right. But I, what, do you, what is your take on it? Well, uh, okay, my, I've tried every conversion. Um, so, so let's just back up a little bit. Uh, so, the, so the two flavors of motors we use are net gain hyper nines and okay. Teslas. So Tesla large drive unit, small drive unit, front, rear, et cetera, et cetera. So those, those are the two kind of like flavors we do. Obviously, okay. the, the hyper nine, fantastic motor. And we do use still some HPEVs motors, AC20s, go in the Fiat 500s, et cetera. Great motors again. Uh, but primarily we uh, have standardized now on the net gain for gain. you know low power applications especially ones where they go onto a gearbox or so some classic car people really like to keep a gear stick and yeah. you know if it's low power then that's fine because if you put 400 horsepower tesla motor onto original gearbox and an mg midget that thing's going to explode yeah. so you know with the tesla drive units um, obviously you've got no gears, you've got just direct drive through a, um, a 9.7 to 1 gear reduction ratio um, so with those, you've got to obviously, as you say, hack it, pretend uh, you've either got to fool that Tesla drive unit into thinking it's still in the Tesla and that's solutions like EV controls, for instance, which, um, I have in my bus, I've got a um, 1969 VW crew cab, um, and that works great. You know, it's pretty much, you know, uh, put the EV controls thing in, wire it up. And as long as you've got uh, compatibility with version firmware, et cetera, it'll work off the bat. Great. Uh, and the other way to do it, and, and I think you've all got uh, HSR as well, is like that. So and I've tried them all. I've tried every single one on the market. Um, and then there is the, let's take the actual Tesla um, uh, control board out of the um, uh, 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 inverter and replace it with uh, another board. Um, and then that's um, uh, Zero EV in the UK. Um, that's who we standardize on that solution, which is an OEM version of an open source board um, which uh, we use uh, basically you know, all the time. So the Zero EV board, highly recommend it. It's gone through all of that, um, you know, learning an R&D phase, some, some of it with my vehicles and some of it obviously with them. Um, but it's gone there, uh, it's gone through that now and I'm finding it's super, super reliable then to put into uh, conversions uh, for the clients. And uh, I think the, the most uh, miles I've got on uh, one now is probably about 30,000 miles with a wow. Zuri we bought in. And there's a lot of version upgrades and firmware upgrades and uh, tweaks and, you know, um, feature enhancements that has happened over the last three years since I started using that board. Um, but it's definitely there now as something that is almost as good as the OEM uh, Tesla board as far as smooth drivability um, and, you know, ease to program. Wow. So that's, in your opinion, that's the, the best way to go about it? It's zero. Yeah, I mean, I, I've pretty much standard, standardized all our Tesla builds now to, to that way. I mean, I, I've, yeah. I've, tried, I've tried the other ways of doing it, and there's nothing wrong with the other ways of doing it. They work. I mean, I still have the uh, EV controls um, solution in my bus because it just works. There's no reason to take that out and put in the zero EV board because the EV controls one works. So that's great. 
Um, but you know, for for a number of reasons, we've standardized on zero EV. Um, not 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 just because actually they're not too far away from us; they're two hours away. Uh, but the support we get off Chris and the gang is fantastic. And when yeah. we want a new feature, or you know, when we come across something that's a little bit buggy, a little bit you know dodgy, as we say in the UK. Uh, they'll be straight on to it and they'll get a new firmware um, uh, uh, developed on it and, and they'll fix it. And when, when you're a conversion shop that has deadlines to get cars out the door for customers, yeah. having a support network of your suppliers who are on it is so important because yeah. the, the supply network for the EV conversion market in the, U, uh, in, in, you know, the world, it, it's, it's flaky. Yeah. And if you're running a business where you're trying to convert cars and there's deadlines and you don't want to, you know, have stuff that's homemade and like, you know, built by some hobbyist in the, in his garage. That's not really the stuff you want to be putting in customers' cars that are going to be going out there and shouldn't need to see that car for five years. Yeah. So zero EV guys are, are, are great in that respect. Wow. Okay. There you go. See, yeah. So as I, like I said, I talked to other shops and they're like, eh, we're still not quite sure that's ready for prime time yet, right? And I'm like, yeah, okay. I haven't tried it personally in any of my cars yet, but that's the plan to put it on my original bus is to put a Tesla drive. And I still haven't decided which one, which way I'm going to go about it. And so now that I'm having conversations here with you. Well, what, have you got, what have you got in your splitties now? Uh, I have HPVS still, AC50s. And uh -huh. I the next one, I just did one or help. One here in my shop uh, with the uh, H uh, with NetGain Hyper Nine, the HV okay. version, and that yeah. one's great because it's smaller and it's got more torque. Uh, it was a kind of a learning curve to go through that setting up the motor and you know doing the whole computer thing and stuff, and you know uh, we still have an issue where we, whenever you step on the accelerator, the right. we see a signal in the brake. Yeah, line. yeah, yeah. I know that one. <laughs> and we can't figure it out. No, we still no. we're trying to do the diodes and no, we're trying no, no. to do the thing and it's a common it's a common pro I come across that like a lot of times. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Hunter over at NetGain's aware of it and it's just um it's a weird issue. We sometimes weird sometimes issue. we get controllers that don't have it, sometimes we do. Um so the only way to um uh, get rid of it is Either just turn uh, brake regen off and just have it uh, off pedal regen, which is fine. Um, so basically, uh, as soon as you come off the accelerator, ah, uh, okay, New, uh, new you have regen, neutral, and then, okay, and then when you put your foot on the brake, you know it's brakes plus off pedal regen. So what you do is you go into the uh, the brake settings and you choose your brakes, um, your brake sensor, set it to none. So ah. that can, that cancels it seeing any brake um, input then. That's, ah, okay. that's the only way we can, um, uh, you know, sort that out. But it's weird. Some controllers have that weird issue. Sometimes, sometimes they sometimes don't. Sometimes they don't. Wow, it's that's weird. so weird. Because it's such an easy thing, and you're like, "Where's the, 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 you know, the signal, you know, path and stuff?" And you're like, "No, there's no nowhere where they can it mix." And you know, and yeah, I, it's I, kind I, of a weird. One. It's an internal issue um, uh, in the controller. In the mean, controller, you, you got to bear in mind we we, we, we order like about 10, 10 uh, hyper nines uh, every month or two, um, so we we go through a lot of hyper nines here, and um, yeah, we we've installed. We've got a lot of experience of installing Hyper Nines ourselves in the in the shop, not just like shipping them out. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, if there's a problem with a motor, be that um, you know an HPEVs, a, um, a net gain, or, or zero EV uh, type of solutions, believe me, we've come across it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So it's weird because I know Michael was aware of it, but he was like still under the impression that he you could fix it. He's like, ah, no, we you get some diodes and do the thing or something, right? And so we're trying all that stuff, and we still have the the, the client uh, scheduled to go down there some more, sometime and see if you know they could fix it over there. But uh, I, I'd cut your losses now and just keep it simple. Switch <laughs> off wow. Okay. So I might have to tell the client that and be like, "Hey, you just well, got it." What car is it in? It's on a 1973 VW bus. Uh, yeah, it's a bay window. switch it off. It's because the, the other thing I find is if you go too much um, heavy on the brake regen, 
in wet conditions and, and especially in winter conditions, you can lock up the back if you're not too careful. So with mm -hmm. the with the off pedal regen that you get with the um, and, uh, Hyper 9, um, and then when you put your foot on the brake, you don't want to then put even more braking onto the rear wheels uh, mm. on a rear rear um, uh, engine or rear wheel drive, uh, like a Beetle or a bus. So switch the brake um, uh, signal off. It's simple. Yeah, we're going to might have to tell him that. He's still going through that right now. He's actually going through problems on the mechanical brakes because we have to remove. So we put a battery on the bottom. We put 14 modules early on these uh, Tesla modules, right? So all at the bottom. You're right, and, and so we have to make room in the bottom and stuff, and we have to take the booster off. Yeah. And so then we move the thing, but he hadn't been checking his brakes, and I guess his car was, like, getting stuck. And I, for some reason, he couldn't tell or something, and he would kept driving it <laughs> until he broke an axle. So the, it's weird. The the Hyper 9 is pretty strong. That It's got it's a torquey motor enough to break an axle in the back. Because he just kept going. <laughs> so, so now he has to fix that. But uh, as soon as he does that, and then, you know, we're just trying to figure out the... So it's well, the little I, issues here and there. I've broken some axles. Don't you worry about that. I, I, <laughs> my um, There's two vehicles that's not there because they're outside park. Uh, or one of them's outside. One is my um, VW Beetle, which has a 600 horsepower performance Tesla drive unit in. Uh, and <laughs> And the other is my daily driver, which is my 1969 VW Crew Cab, and that's got a 450 horsepower Tesla driving it. It's the green one, right? I think I've the seen. Uh, yeah, I've I've seen videos of you doing burnouts in the parking lot or something, right? So you can imagine I've broken quite a few drive shafts, too. <laughs> wow. Yeah, because those you have to. So by the way, the 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 Tesla drive motor is a motor it's an assembly right it's a motor inverter and then it's got a yeah, differential yeah. i'm sorry so yeah i mean it, it's it's a nice setup i mean whether or not it's a large tesla drive unit or a small um i've got a small over there i'll show you that and i've got a large over there so and so, then you you have to put axles on that right and you have to put like little stubbies yeah. like in a little adapter or something which ones do you use we, we make up on our own i'll show you ah no way okay so that that's that's a lot. Oh. For those that don't know, um, yeah. that's the inverter that side, and that's the motor. A lot of people think there's two motors, but obviously it's not. So you got a motor that side, inverter that side, and in the middle you got your gear set. Your gear set. It's a single gear, right? Nine to one ratio, nine point. I think it's uh, nine point seven three to one uh, from memory. And then over, over here, we got the fabrication side of things. So this is where all the battery boxes get made up and subframes and things like that and motor mounts. And just on the floor down here, we've got a, a small Tesla drive. That's driving. the small one. That's the one that I want to put in my bus. That's a small front. Small front, so, yeah. Because yeah. So we front. still haven't gotten the, the Model 3 motors figured out, right? That's That hasn't happened? Uh. It's pretty much there now, yeah. So, oh, uh, you know, okay. you know, there you go. Um, so, yeah, uh, Chris, down at Zero, Chris down at Zero EV is pretty much uh, nearly ready to, to roll that uh, solution out with a, oh. um, a Model 3 motor support. But, uh, I don't want to steal his thunder on that, so he'll no doubt announce that uh, when he's ready. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's but, uh, good I news see, because see. It, there's way more Model 3s than there are Model S's, so... Hopefully the the price is going to yeah. go down, right? It's, the availability is much higher. It's, it's, it's good news all around, I think. Uh, and it's a better motor. Uh, it, it, I mean, uh, the More Model efficient. S and Model X motors, they're induction motors. So yeah. they, they, they have to induce the magnetic field, so they get hot. Uh, whereas yeah. the Model 3 is more like the Hyper 9 motor. It's a permanent mag motor that um, is thin, more efficient. Le exactly, there's less less heat that's uh, generated, so you know it's more efficient, so that you get a little bit more range out of it. It's an alt altogether better motor and, and and a more modern motor. So the yeah. sooner we get it, and it's nicely packaged, it's a little bit smaller, and it's 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 great. Not quite 600 horsepower like the, the big Tesla drive units, but it's 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 a reasonable, it's a sensible amount of power. Yeah. So just while I'm here, I'll show you some of the um, things we do. So. This is the fabrication. So we, all the guys have gone now, so it's nice and quiet. But this is where we make things like battery boxes up. Um, so this is a, a mock-up battery box. So once we do a, um, a, a design of um, a, a, a solution, if it's going to be a repeatable design, then we'll jig everything up. 
So this is essentially a jigged up nine, Porsche 911 uh, kit just on this bench here. So you've got essentially the Tesla drive units, uh, motor mounts here, they're all bolt on. Uh, you've got the, that looks like the rear or the front. Um, uh, no, that's the rear battery box. And over there you've got the front battery box. So that's a complete Porsche 911 setup. And then just on the floor behind me here, you've got various different, uh, that, that's a, uh, that's a couple of uh, Land Rover Defender battery boxes. Uh, it's another Land Rover Defender front battery box. Here's wow. all the sliders where the um, uh, Tes Tesla drive units go in. And then a load, load more battery boxes all ready to go for powder coating down there for various wow. different cars we've got in the shop. Is that aluminum so, or is that steel? What do you, what do you fabricate out of? Steel. Steel? Okay. Yeah, steel. Because... Uh, uh, yeah, by the time you, because um, you need the strength. I mean, if you're talking about um, the Land Rover um, uh, uh, Defender boxes, there's 10 batteries in the front, and that's yeah. like 250 kilos. You need yeah. strength in the battery box to be able to hold safely and securely 250 kilos. And to get that strength out of aluminium, you need to go a little bit thicker with the aluminium. By the time you've done that, you may as well use steel. So yeah. uh, here's uh, a Mercedes SL. So this yes, one, so. we just got this running today. Um, there's obviously a lot more snagging and everything that needs to be done on it, but essentially just having a look in here gives you an idea of what it's like. So you've got your main front battery box in there. You've got your service disconnect, which is obviously out at the moment, your high voltage uh, connection there. Um, and there is, uh, I think, five Tesla Model S modules in the front. And then underneath, you can't quite see down there, but underneath there is a Hyper 9 motor. Ah, and then Hyper if you come, come around the back, the interior is completely out at the moment. And then in the rear here, we've got, just take this out and put that on the floor. In here, you've got uh, one battery box there, and then okay. one battery box in the floor where the old um, petrol tank used to be. Ah, okay. What what will happen is we've got a um, essentially a, um, a firewall or or a bit of board that goes down there with carpet on. So essentially you'll have a full size boot in there. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's about what's how many kilowatt hours? So you got ten. So it's about fifty fifty three kilowatt hours uh, back to back oh. in that vehicle. Yeah. yeah. And a cool load aerodynamic vehicle. It should be pretty good. That's what I have on mine right now. Fifty. Some kilo, 52 kilowatt hours, like something like that. Um, so let's uh, so in a bus, um, that should give you about 125, 130 mile range, depending on how speed. you drive it. Yeah, I've gotten yeah, up to 160 hyper mile in it, but I've also almost made it home. So, Michael at EV West is 91 miles away from me, and right. when I drive over there and then I come back at night, uh, the roads are open. And I just step on it, you know, and I barely made it home. So I've barely gotten 91 miles out of it too, because because I'm doing 70, 75, or you know. <laughs> well, my, my bus, um, my crew cab has um, a P85 pack in it now. We've put also I put a 100 kilo hour pack in there, but a 85. But I've got an 85 in there at the moment. <clears throat> and I think you, the other thing you got to bear in mind is when people say it's a P85 pack. The usable kilowatt hours is not 85 kilowatt hours, you know. So you got to take into account if you put an 85 kilowatt hour battery pack in, it's not 85 kilowatt hours. It 85 kilowatt hours uh, minus the because it's secondhand minus the you know amount Degradation. of degraded degraded over time minus the usability factor. So quite often an 85 kilowatt hour pack that's secondhand usually ends up being something like 65 to 70 kilowatt hours usable. Yeah. So in my bus, uh, 65, 70 kilowatt hour usable is uh, around about 200 mile range. Yeah. Um, just there driving, driving normally um, uh, with um, you know a roads, which is what. 50. Did you have to do anything to the suspension? Because an 85 kilowatt hour pack, uh, it's quite heavy, <laughs> right? You're talking about almost 900 pounds, I think, of battery modules, right? Plus the boxes and all the stuff that you end up doing. So. I mean, you got to bear in mind a VW bus, uh, like a splitty, that one that's behind you there. That, that, I mean, I don't know what this is in pounds. We'll have to convert it to American. Um, so, <laughs> yes. uh, Wait, to, you're you're in the UK. You don't use pounds. Come on. 
<laughs> so 2,000 kilos is what a split <coughs> was what a split screen can uh, uh, cope Carry. with, mm -hmm. uh, and in pounds that is uh, 4,400 pounds. So fully laden maximum uh, gross weight of a split eat is 4,400 pounds or 2,000 kilos. Now. Um, that splitty out there in the workshop is 1,200 kilos as it is now in petrol form. And that Damn. is uh, 2,650 2, pounds at the moment. 600, 2,600, like, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, if, now the plan is in that splitty out there, we're gonna put a 100 kilo hour battery pack in. How? And a small, small Tesla drive unit. How are you gonna put a 100 kilo an hour pack? That's easy. It's, Where? Honestly, it's the easiest conversion to do, Jay. Really? Uh, yep. It's the same in my bus. I mean, if it wasn't so dark, I'd show it to you. Where are you putting the, the, the modules? So in the... Let, I'll show you. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so if I just finish off with the weight sort of thing. So at the moment, that split screen is 1,200 kilos, which is, what did I say? Um, 2,600 pounds. It's light, by the way. Because the, the ones like the Sambas, they have the, all the glass and stuff, they end up being around 3,000 pounds. Yeah. So uh, and yeah. it's the same. If, if it's a crew cab, it's different. If it's a pickup, mm -hmm. it's different. If it's a panel van, it's different. Mm -hmm. But usually the, um, the campers are around about 1,200 kilos, which is, what did I say, 2,600 um, pounds. Now, yeah. once we drop the engine, the gearbox, um, and the fuel tank out of there and you've got to account for fuel as well so you'd say okay let's a fuel tank with fuel it's going to be dropping around about 200 kilos off it yeah so you're dropping that weight down then to about a thousand kilos once you drop the dirty smelly stuff out and a thousand <laughs> kilos is 2200 pounds and then we're going to add a complete 100 kilowatt hour battery pack plus battery box because the battery box weighs a bit yeah. plus uh, a tesla drive unit plus you know coolant system and the bits and pieces that come with it and we're going to be putting back on something in the region of about 500 kilos um, wow. so that will then take it up to 3300 pounds oh so okay that's not bad it, exactly it's not bad not because bad. You, 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 you you'll still have now bear in mind that's 1500 kilos with a 100 kilo hour battery pack in tesla drive unit in small tesla capacity is um a, a maximum weight it can be 2000 kilos so I still got oh you're still there yeah it cut off a little bit but yeah, yeah. You're it's, back. It's, so i'm at the opposite end of the workshop so yeah even though we're putting in a um 100 kilo hour battery pack we still have around about 500 kilo kilograms of uh, load carrying capacity cargo yeah which is fine. And that's about a thousand, uh, twelve hundred pounds or something like that. That's a that's that's you and your friends. In American, that's it's, about yeah. five Just Americans. <laughs> 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 Europeans, you're talking about more like seven or eight. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll show you where it goes. So um, this this is a beautiful. It's all original inside here. So if we just open this up, the uh, the interior is just. It's all original. Oh, wood. yeah. It's, it's got, yeah, it's all set up for camping. Yes. Uh, it's, it's even got the, uh, the, the original, yeah, uh, look at that. Yeah. Uh, oh, man. That's, those are awesome. Those are so awesome little vehicles. Let me, uh, let me show you why it's, uh, let me, uh, just grab, uh, ah, I was going to grab a, uh, a tape measure, but it's it's gone. Um, okay, so you see that box down there? Uh huh. So oh, that, that's I see. the drivers there. That box is literally exactly the right size to fit a complete Tesla Model S battery pack. No way! That box itself, that box alone. Yep. So no what way. you've got is from there to there is 27, uh, 27 inches. Okay. A Tesla Tesla Model S module is just uh, I think about twenty six. Uh, inches yeah so by the time you put the bus bars on the front and take the cabling around the side and stuff you're probably going to be coming out to literally about there yeah so okay. maybe, maybe half an inch half an inch more but it, uh, that's about it and then height wise um uh, so you're, you're talking about a tesla uh, module on its side it's about a foot tall and that believe it or not is exactly a foot tall also oh, you're gonna put them standing up like that yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So, all, uh, and if you stand them 16 all the way across like that, it literally comes to right there. Wow. Okay. So I see. It'll, be, it'll all be hidden underneath that uh, uh, cabinet there, underneath that seat. Oh, wow. So, it's, so it's going to be kind of front heavy. Um, it's, it's literally mid mount because if you look, it's mid -mount, that's, yeah. that's literally bang on in the middle of a vehicle. Yeah. So in, in my in my crew cab, it's exactly the same, and it handles great because all the weight's in the middle. Yeah. Okay. Now wow. the other thing is, you lose a bit of uh, storage there, yeah. but okay. you got to bear in mind that essentially your whole engine bay is then free. So essentially, you're right? In, if you're putting a Tesla drive, there's like nothing down there. It's just yeah, I mean, in my in my bus, my uh, engine bay is essentially my um, uh, uh, another storage space. Wow, so that's crazy. Then end up with uh, all the way from there to about there inside the engine bay as uh, a new luggage space. So you actually, bizarrely enough, end up with more luggage space when it's electric <laughs> than it, when it's petrol. No way! That is yeah. going to be a pretty amazing. So here's the thing. I thought we were like cool because we put 14 modules on a bay window, right? And we put them all on the floor. So we didn't like it's so on the inside that bay window set up similar to that. It's got the little kitchen thing and the sink and the stuff, right? So we didn't go in the inside at all. So we didn't lose any of that. And then at the bottom, it's all evenly. I think it was a little bit front heavy. So he has to figure out how to lift it up a little bit. So it's uh, back to stock height. Uh, and that's cool, but I mean, you're doing that on a split window, and you're putting 16 modules. That yeah. is, that's that. I don't think nobody's done that. I know that Selectric's done a few conversions out here, and they've never. I've always been like, come on, put more battery in there. You know, it's like, what is this? You got 60 miles, 80 miles range. It's cool, but now, come on, you know. Well, if um, you go if you go on our social media, like Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter and stuff, you, if you go back like about a year, maybe two, you'll see how I did my bus. So you'll see uh, underneath the back seat, um, like sixteen modules lined up like a pack of cards, and the bus uh, yeah. between them. You'll you'll see, and it just it's it fits. The like crew cabs are a unique thing because they have all that giant space in there, right? Like I know right. Michael has a crew cab, and he has a bunch of batteries in there too. Uh, and it right in the middle. I mean, it's a perfect for the battery spot yeah. there. Now, now the challenge is when you go big batteries, you've got a lot of batteries to charge up. So you Man. can't go with like a J1772 charging up like at, you know, uh, six kilowatts or whatever, because it'll just take like three days to charge up. So, <laughs> yes. uh, what are you guys doing? In, in the States, you've got even more of a problem because in the States, you don't have three-phase AC charging or anything like that either. It's well, like, I have three-phase in my commercial building here, but, yeah, you usually don't, yeah. Uh, in, in public charges, I mean, uh, you don't have 22-kilowatt uh, charging points in the States. You have seven kilowatts, and then I think it's CCS and Chadmo. There's a, just, like, a massive jump up to, like, DC charging, and then it's down to domestic charging. Yeah. And in, in Europe, we've got um, uh, uh, Menek is, um so you probably don't, well, I, I, it's not probably, you don't have, you don't have that. That, nope. And nope, if you nope, notice, nope. there's three phases. So you've got, like, uh, phase one, two, and three. And then you've got neutral and earth. Neutral and so earth, that, yeah. That means you can have three seven kilowatt charges ah, in the vehicle. That's so like 20 kilowatts. 22 kilowatts uh, of charging. Wow. Yeah. So in things like the bus and the Land Rovers, uh, we put in uh, yeah, uh, at least 22 kilowatt charges in. And we're just about to start putting in CCS as well. So rapid charging, uh, DC charging solutions. Oh, I can't wait for that. I mean, that becomes a thing. We had, a, I just had as a guest, uh, the guy that came up with CCS combo. Oh. And he's talking to me about the future of what, like all the functionality that they're bringing to that platform. And it's pretty <laughs> incredible. It's going to be a pretty impressive uh, standard, right? And I think it's going to be the standard to beat all other standards and stuff. Uh, and so, yeah, if you can make the uh, classic cars have compatibility with CCS, oh, my God, that's going to be amazing. But the first vehicle that's having it is um, uh, it's actually going to be my test vehicle. It's uh, one, of, one of my test vehicles. It's actually th this, uh, this down here. Uh, it's a Land Rover. Land Rover. There you yes. go. So it's a Land Rover Defender, and that's going to have the CCS um, on it. Uh, 
I'm going to start putting the body back on. The body's just a paint at the moment. Uh, but yeah, the um, CCS is going on that uh, probably in January. Oh, that's going to be awesome. You're going to be able to travel anywhere you want to go. Fast charge. Well, I, I, I've been driving my electric bus for, I don't know, what, three, three years, at least three years as my daily driver. I don't have any modern cars. I, I never really have. Uh, so my, my crew cab is my daily driver. And I've driven that everywhere from like to London to, you know, okay, you don't know the ge 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 geography. Yeah. But, you know, it, it's, a, it's a good distance to London. And mm. I've, it, it, it works on the public charge infrastructure and that has 22 kilowatt charging. Ah, okay. Um, well, 22, it's pretty fast. Yeah, you're right. Over here, we have that problem where it's like slow or high and we haven't had a... Uh, yeah. access to the high but charging the, the the problem is we we have uh with the larger vehicles like, like the we got a defender there and we got another one there and a, another one there they're pretty popular uh, vehicles i mean we've always got two or three land rovers in the shop at any one time and we're, we're starting to ship kits over to the u.s now so if there's any uh customers out there that want an electric defender contact uh, ecd so uh, east coast defenders they, uh, we started nice. shipping out our electric conversion kits out to those guys and they started oh no way you have a dealer in the yeah. u.s look yeah, at that yeah, yeah. There they, we all, go. They, they built some beautiful vehicles as well check out ecd um they're down in florida but uh, i think they've got uh, places in california as well but um i just want to show you what the um conversion of a defender looks like um and those you're putting tesla drives on those right because they're big heavy cars yeah yeah so that's uh wow that's look at the, that pack looks like that's just that's a cover that's right? just a cover. yeah that's a cover for a battery box the battery um, box so Jeez. if you want to see what that looks like uh without the um cover on uh this land rover behind me has no cover on Just open this one up for you now. What year are these vehicles? These are modern. Uh... Uh, very modern, yeah. Yeah. I think they're around about 2000, 2010. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is. Well, they're actually. This, believe it or not, this monster of a thing. Yeah. Um, and also this one here. Um, that that one in the background there does 0 to 60 in about four seconds, which <laughs> yes, is just nuts. <laughs> I mean, you can, you can beat uh, Ferraris or beat, uh, well, not Ferraris, but maybe like any of the American muscle cars, probably. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's just four, four wheel burnout. It's crazy. But oh, because it's all wheel drive. Oh, yeah, it's four wheel drive. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. So you, you put that transverse, the motor's transverse is not. Correct. Oh, wow. That's crazy. So you, you, the two shafts, one's going to the front, one's going to the back, and then you have your own differentials know. there. I don't know if it'll work. Um, let, me, let me see. I don't. I don't know if this. You can see that underneath there. Uh, oh the yeah, there's the motor. Right. No way. And that works. Oh yeah. That the only works. thing you need to bear in mind is uh, the gear gear set needs to be changed. So you can't uh, run the original gear set because um, you've got uh, you know nine to one gear set in there running then to the. Uh, gear reduction that's in the axles, which is 3.4 to 1 or something like that. So if you don't change the Tesla gear set, you'll end up with a max speed of like 50-odd miles an hour. Ah, you'll get so to you... 50 miles an hour very quick, <laughs> but it'll be max speed. So you've got to change the gear set in the Tesla drive unit to 4.5 to 1. Ah, okay. So you have taller gears. The yeah. Gear ratios. Ah, but, I see. Yeah, because uh, now you have two different gearboxes, one in the front, one in the back with their own differentials and the whole thing. Wait, so you also have to change the differential on the Tesla, right? Do you have to put like a limited slip or change it to something else? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so what, what we do is uh, there's a limited slip diff that we put in because obviously these can be used for four-wheel four drive applications. So you want them to uh, be as good off-road off as they are on the road. So That's got... so crazy. You know, I remember having a conversation about this and like, oh, what if you were able to do this? And I didn't know that you guys were actually already doing it and it's it's working. That's uh... oh, yeah. oh, a. So this is. Uh... Let's have a look. So this is a, an open deck. So this is an original Tesla drive unit. Wow. With uh, the spider gears. Look at that. That's an open deck. 
and then what we do is we take um, essentially that out and we put in a, uh, a limited slip diff. Let's see if I can get one over. There's one in here. There we go. So. Who makes that? This is made by Quaife. Quaife, so, okay. So again, um, Zero EV sells them. Um, they're, uh, again, got, got them in their web shop. Uh, that's, that's the limited that's slip diff. Quaife. Ah, there you go. So that's what you need so that, so, yes. That's, this is a Tesla one. That's a limited slip diff. So if you want to get all the power to the ground, that's what you need. I've got that in my bug. It's the only way I get 600 horsepower of Tesla power <laughs> yes. to, the, uh, to the ground. Yes. But also in a four-wheel drive application, that sits in the middle of the, uh, of the vehicle. That then goes to the front prop shaft, rear prop shaft. And then we've got another one of these in the front axle and another one in the rear axle. So we've ah, got three okay. limited slip diffs in the Defenders, which means ah, they, okay. they perform so, so well off-road. So that means that when you step on it, you stomp on the accelerator, all four wheels will spin and not just, you know, Correct. two or whatever, you know. Yeah, it'll yeah. keep it. So huh. it pretty much guarantees you all of the power, you'll get it to the ground um, in an efficient manner, put it that way. Yes. Because the other one is a traditional differential, which works a little bit different. Only one wheel spins and, you know, that's... Yeah. An, open, an open diff... If one wheel uh, kind of spinning, uh, it, it, you just don't get all that power down to the ground. So yeah. uh, you know, pa power is pretty lazy. So it'll take the least, like uh, yeah. least path of resistance. Um, and if one wheel spinning, essentially you're just not going to get that power to the ground. Whereas a limited slip diff, it does exactly that. It it limits the slip of the wheel that's slipping and puts yeah. the power to the wheel that's not slipping and got the grip. Um, so that all the power is pretty much guaranteed to go to the ground as, as much ground. as possible. Yeah, it's just a more advanced, different, different differentials, you know. But wow, that's pretty crazy. And and those are modern vehicles, you said, right? And do they have a lot of electronics? Do you get into all this stuff, or these are kind of like toned down, like kind of classic cars, just made in modern um, times? They 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 are. I mean, yeah, we we do get. Um, uh, cam based vehicles. I mean, e even that Merc out there, that, that's a 1990 something, I think. Oh, yeah, we're, 90. We're, we, we only, I mean, we, we're pretty much uh, concentrated on uh, classic cars from 1950s, 60s, and 70s, maybe early 80s. But the exceptions are uh, a vehicle like that or that uh, Alfa okay. Romeo Spider, because that was essentially made from the 1970s through to the 1980s. Um, and, and nothing really major changed over the years ah, in that. So, you know, although there's some modern um, dashboards and things, we can deal with it. Uh, and now in the Land Rovers, you've got, um, you've got CAN communications for the uh, uh, systems. You've got ABS, you've got traction control, things like that. But what we've done, uh, see if I can turn this on. So what we've done, we've, we've replaced the original dial cluster with our own dial cluster. Ah, okay. So All right. If I turn, turn this on here now, and if I turn the lights on, you'll see it a little bit better. Oh, no way. Look at that. So this is speed on this side. Then you've got your um, state of charge for the batteries. The batteries are currently 100%. You've got yes. temp temperature for the motor, and then you've got amps over on this side. So we made our own dark cluster up essentially, uh, and that talks uh, directly to the BMS and the uh, Tesla drive unit. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah. Ah, uh, see, that's yeah, that's a great, great implementation there. Because here's the thing: like, I know with our classic cars, we kind of like I care about the dash, right? And I want to change as little as possible in the dashboard, right? But on the modern car, I don't care. You know, it's like, who cares? Is that needle with the light? I don't care. Put a new thing, right? Like, if I were to get a modern car and convert it, yeah. uh, is that sort of like the same thing that happens with, with in your view or yeah, in the mean, customer's it, views? If you look at the this the MG Midget here, so uh -huh. I mean, that, that that MG Midget dashboard is pretty cool. And okay, it's got, it's got chrome dials in it. It's got a you know, it's got a chrome like uh, speedo and stuff. And our yeah. challenge is. To keep all that, even though this is electric, we've got to keep all that, and, and you don't want to put a modern 
uh, uh, you know, LCD touchscreen display yes. to plug in a Tesla. So one of the challenges we have always is how do we make those dials work and how do we, you know, repurpose uh, existing dials? It's the same. I mean, you have the same problem in, in Beatles. I mean, in a Beatles, yes. it's even worse because all you've got in a Beatles is one <laughs> central dial. Yes. So, and well, that well, doesn't well, tell you much, by the way. It's just yeah. speed and a couple of lights and that's it. You know, it's like. Well, in this, there's a, um, uh, a fuel gauge, at least here. Oh, that's so, a new, that's a new Beetle. You know, well, I deal is, with the older ones and they don't tell you that. <laughs> exactly. But you can put the uh, newer dial in that's got that in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then what you do, it saves you, saves you cutting out a hole here for the uh, fuel gauge. Yeah. You, you just drive the, uh, the fuel needle from the BMS. So essentially ah, when, you, I see. when you turn this on, you fuel full, half, uh, empty, etc. That is turned into your battery state of charge meter. I see. And it keeps your dashboard all nice and original then. Yeah. And that works because I remember using an early version uh, of a system trying to drive that through uh, Pulse, you know, PWM signal. And I just never got it to work. It's just, I don't know if it was my dial or whatever. Because on the buses, you have a, a dedicated gas gauge on yeah. the later 60s version, right? So, um I just never got it to work. I th so that the works with the BMS systems that you use currently. Yeah, we, we use dilithium. So, ah, okay. um, oh, really? Yeah, dilithium. So I actually got into that in the last conversion that I did. And you, so you're able to drive that, uh, the stock original. Okay. Oh, I got to look into that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty simple. I mean, uh, in the BMS display that you have with dilithium, um, you can go in and you can program up the uh, the um, uh, remote display um, oh uh, I see you use the display I didn't use the display on the on this last one that I we did so oh, we're yeah. just gonna do like a little light or an alarm or something and but I do know that it talks can right so it talks to other components and stuff to the display yeah, well, that, that's how we get the um, that's how we get the uh, uh, gauges to work so I mean I've got a ton ton of gauges over here which we just need to set up but oh, look at that. Just, uh, yeah, you just, uh, th these are all ones that have just arrived that I've got to uh, just check and test. But, um, yeah, on the on these, um, if I just grab one, uh, they, they support cam. So, there you go. Ah, there so you that, go. That's, that's, what's that? That's amps. There you go. Yeah, and that, that has a, you know, a cool look. It's like it could be classic. It could be new. Yeah, uh, so, so, that, so that talks to um, the Dilithium BMS. Ah, so, okay. It's, it's getting amps from the Dilithium BMS, and if you notice, it's the zero is here. It's not. It's not down there. Oh, yeah, so that you can have region. Exactly. Yeah. Wow, that's cool. That's is that a is that like a custom thing that you're doing, or is that it's, like a it's speed hut? Speed speed hut. Yes. Speed, speed hut. Uh, they're they're in the U.S. in maybe in California. Yes, and they do will make custom gauges for you, like whatever you want, I think, right? That's right. Yeah. So, so is we, this one of your designs that you've done? You, you have? Uh, so uh, we've spoken to uh, Speed Hut so that they support the can addressing um, that we need for things like the uh, zero EV boards and the um, dilithium BMSs and things like that. So when we order up um, the dials, we, they know we just need the – ECC supporting solution and uh, with our brand on, so it's got our logo on and stuff like that. Nah, and there just, you go. all they need to know is whether or not it's, um, you know, motor temperature, inverted temperature, a state of charge, um, you know, what parameter you're pulling into it, essentially. Wow. You got it all figured out over there. That's cool. <laughs> no wonder why you have 15 cars at a time. So you've, you've done up to 100 cars a year. Yeah, we're up to about that. Yeah. Jeez, that's, uh, that's a lot of cars. Yeah, we, we, I mean, we're trying to get it so it's as um, efficient to convert a car as possible. So like that green beetle out there, uh, last week we converted that in a day. Now, that's not to say that we started everything um, in the morning. Um, obviously, when you convert a car, you do prep work. So yeah. for instance, the battery boxes were already fabricated up. The, uh, yeah. They were already powder coated. You weren't starting with a welder and some sheet metal. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what we did. But it's the same boxes. Now you can repeat it, right? It's the same boxes that went into the earlier, you know, a previous Beetle. Now you just fabricate them, fabricate two, and then, then the second set goes into a new one. If you, I mean, you've, you've probably seen Beetle conversions left, right, and center. And the original Beetle kit I bought off um, Michael. 
um, mm -hmm. at EBUS. Yeah. And, and it was a great kit, but I wouldn't exactly call it um, plug and play, let's say. Mm -hmm. um, it was something that um, still needed uh, a little bit of, um, you know, well, I say a little bit. It, it, it needed time to actually uh, install correctly. Yeah. But what what we have here now is if I just look. So that's the front battery box, there and, you go. and this this literally just bolts directly into the um, uh, original bolt holes for the fuel tank. But equally, if we come around here a little bit, everything is literally just plug and play. So this this is the main high voltage connector. Wow. And then that just plugs in there. Uh, around the front, you've got another connector for the cam, just down there. And then you just plug that in, plug that in, run the cables to the to the rear box, uh, and then uh, all the contactors and all the stuff that uh, I've seen in, um, uh, in the US. Uh, you put the contactors sometimes in a separate box. Yeah. Well, we try. We try we put all that into the uh, um, battery boxes, which ah. means that the battery boxes go in and then the high voltage cables come directly out then to the Into to the, the motor. motor there. There you go. Yeah. See, there. See, I think he changed that now. I think he's putting all the contactors inside the boxes now. Yeah. It, it, uh, makes, everything, it makes everything easier and, uh, for the installer, but also safer. Yeah. And that's how the OEMs are doing it, right? So we were like, yeah, if that's how they're doing it. Tesla now, the Model 3 has yeah. everything included in that box there. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> there you go. So that's the one one day job right there. That's pretty yeah, cool. We converted that in one day. Um, we started at 8.30 a.m. And we finished at around about 11 p.m. And to be honest, we would have been finished around about tea time, so 6 p.m. If it wasn't for the usual classic car beetle issues, Problems. nothing to do with the conversion. It was just usual, like somebody's modified the car in the past, done done yeah. some weird stuff to it, which caused issues. Uh, they put a for some reason they put a, a really early '60s gearbox in, which oh. caused some problems. Um, they had an air ride system on it in the past, so there was these brackets in the way of things, so it needed to be sorted out. So, no, nothing, nothing that doesn't normally happen on a conversion. There's always spanners that are thrown in the works for a 60-year-old car. Somebody is bound to have worked on it in the past and done something a little bit dodgy. Yeah. Uh, but the problem was because we were converting it in a day. Yeah, you know, we didn't have the time to mess around and like sort that out. Well, we, we had to sort it out, but it just delayed us by three hours. So. Is that going to have a, a, an episode of Zone on the TV show? Yeah, yeah, they oh, filmed it. okay. Yeah. All right. We want to see that. Uh, yeah. that. That's not part of the TV show. They're going to put that on YouTube as a separate um, episode. Oh, okay. That one's not exciting enough. <laughs> no, it, it's, it, that's a competition car, so somebody's going to win that. Uh, oh, so, no way. That, uh, uh, if, if, that... you're, if you're in the UK, you can enter the competition if you are... Uh, you, uh, uh, Octopus Energy is a, a electricity oh, supplier, and if you're uh, part of Octopus Energy and you're, you're a customer, you can enter uh, the competition. And I think they're announcing it on uh, 30th of December. They're announcing the winner. Oh no way! Okay, so you're doing a giveaway with someone. You partner up with the the company and stuff. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. They were they were actually the sponsor of the TV show, and then uh, yeah, they um. They suggested having a giveaway, and I thought, well, let's just take that one step further, and let's see if we can convert it in a day. In a day. Which we did. Um, but, yeah, that's going to uh, some lucky uh, customer in January, I think, so a couple of weeks. Wow. I got to move to the, the UK to, to enter. So, <laughs> you know, what was the crazy, like, uh, have you done, like, restoration? There's this one company in Colombia that does all the panels, all the, you know, like res like the sheet metal panels. Yeah. Uh, called Funky Green Metal or whatever. So he came here once and he wanted to do that. He wanted to convert a car or a bus. Well, he, want, he didn't want to convert a car. He wanted to build one from scratch. You see, now they make all these parts, right? Every single panel on a, on a bus, uh, a frame, rails, everything. And so the, he wanted to do like pre-assembled sections and he wanted to take them over to SEMA. I don't know if you know SEMA. Yeah, it's yeah. a national, you know, car show one of the biggest ones here in the states it happens in in vegas every year and so he wanted to go there show up with parts and then there at the show 
you know, it's like three days, four days, I think. And they he wanted to put it all together, weld it together. And then he wanted me to work uh, with uh, in making it electric, you know. And then I put the battery box and the bat, the motor and stuff. And then, you know, at the end of the show, we, we walk away with a running car or something. <laughs> and we were going to do it this year, but COVID-19 happened. And, you know, that derailed the whole thing or whatever. <laughs> but it yeah, make the funky classic fab. Uh, that guy makes all the parts. So if you, like probably almost there's probably no buses in the world that don't have at least one of his parts almost at this point because they rust away, right? Uh, yeah. Especially yeah. over there in England, they they rust away with the and so they they put the stuff in here. And he was uh, we were talking about that last year, and we're like, yeah, let's make it happen. I go, you do the bus, I'll do the electric conversion. I'll show up, and you know, we put it together. We could do it. We if we work this stuff off before, you know, pre-build the body boxes and do the the cables, pre-run the cables and stuff with the connectors, and we should be able. To it, do it. It, it only takes one little snag to screw everything up, though. That's the problem. And yeah, uh, yeah it's the same with us. Like last week when we did that, it was it was only one issue that meant that we had to pull the motor in and out like five times. I mean, oh. yeah, we've done enough. We've done like ten odd beetles and. Yeah, we, we know what we're doing. You know, it goes in and it goes in like that. I mean, I can drop a beetle engine probably in about three minutes. And yeah. you know, for us to have to put that in and f- figure out something's not right and take it back out again and put it back in and like you lose so much time just with one little issue like that. So it, I'd say, Jehu, it's definitely possible to do it. But <laughs> it's a challenge. Just plan for failure. <laughs> 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 yeah, we definitely didn't plan for this failure because COVID nineteen just threw a wrench in that whole oh, plan. Yeah. That whole show good. didn't happen. I mean, it was crazy. The whole thing got canceled. Uh, uh, but who knows? There's, Maybe there's, it'll there's happen next few, year. There's the Beetle, um, and obviously the bus. You've seen how easy that is now with a single battery box. You put it in, slide it in. The connectors go in underneath. Yeah. Uh, and Which connectors are you using, by the way? Uh, Those big, like massive high, high, vol- high voltage connectors. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen anything that. I like so far. Uh, we're using, we're still using like those big Anderson connectors, you know, like that stuff from, from the yeah. forklifts and stuff. The, tr- the trouble is with um, the U.S. and the European. There's uh, the conversion market in the Europe is more regulated than in the yeah. U.S. Uh-huh. So you can get away with pretty much like whatever. Anything really. Yes, <laughs> that's uh, the great thing about California. They don't care if it rolls. You know, it's like I'm running, like they never inspected my bus, any of my buses. They're like, oh, we don't care, you know. Just now, the, the problem is with that is, um, it's okay for people to know what you're doing, like you, um, but there's people out there that might think they know what they're doing and might be building a death trap. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's, there's people I've seen on YouTube, um, some idiots that like you know, charged up some Tesla batteries and it went on fire in a workshop. <laughs> I'm yes. thinking. Guys, yes. you should not be messing around with electric cars if you don't know how to charge up a battery with a BMS on and do it safely. Stop yes. doing that. You will kill yourself or worse, other people. Yes. And, you, know, you know, I had him in the in the podcast. He was one of my guests. <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 I watched it once and I just held my head in my hands and thought that. Yeah, guy. we all did that. We're all like, oh, no, you idiot. We're like, yeah. So I've been like that. Um, they worry me because um, yeah. it only takes one accident to like have a fire in a garage and set the house on fire for yeah. like regulation in the US to come down on the conversion market. But yeah. in the UK and Europe, there's more tight regulations to kind of prevent that from happening. So you're talking about the connectors. We use those connectors because that's what the OEM com- companies use. Those big orange connectors with insulative uh, like um, uh, clamps and things like that on. Yeah. We don't use that for you know for any other reason than uh, you know it's safety. We have to have safety connectors like that and safety s- service disconnects. Yeah. Um, so on some uh, service disconnects, I mean uh, the service disconnects you, you might use in the U.S. with those big gigavac like on off. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. In the in the UK and Europe, um, you can't use that because essentially the the other ends are open. You can the other ends are open. open. Yeah. So you know the, we have the, to put them in boxes. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but e- but equally, they're not really designed for EVs. It's, yeah. That's designed for a high voltage isolation on like a, um, a distribution panel in a in a switch room in a Walmart store, for instance. Yeah. Um, so you know the the service disconnects we use are 
EV specific service disconnects. Um, and you know they, they have an IP rating for uh, water ingress and things like this, and they have, uh, you know, uh, they they're just made for electric vehicles. So the, the, that's the main difference between the U, U, US market and the European market is there's tighter regulations. Yeah, uh, and it's and it's weird. Although the EU is supposed to be like this one rule for all for trading within the countries, it's not. So in, uh, and you know, obviously the UK is just about to come out of the EU, but in like some countries in the EU, it's more tightly regulated than other countries. Yes. So you've got like countries like the Netherlands where you can convert to certain standards and then you go to other countries in Europe and it, it basically can't. I mean, it's, it's really bizarre. And in other countries, it's like the US. I mean, it's just, there's no level rules, but there are rules in Europe. Whereas in yeah. the U.S., it's definitely more like the Wild West. Yes, it's like here we don't they don't care. It's, it's uh, I guess it's the only part that I'm like, because California is highly regulated. It's about the most regulated state in the, the in the states, right? Uh, except when it comes to that, and I'm like, oh, this is like a free state. You know, you can do whatever. I'm like, great, because you don't they don't hassle us. You know, we can let us. Other than having to be. It gets a little bit com uh, complicated when it's past like 1975, because then now you have to change it. You have to register as an electric. Before that, they don't care. Like you can literally, because like classic cars here are not regulated for emissions. So my uh -huh. bus, I don't have to register. They don't. I don't have to tell them that it's electric. They don't care. They're just like. Do you, as as you have like um, MOTs where you have to take it to a test center every year to make sure it's still okay and safe and like the now? lights work and no, nope. <laughs> that's nuts. You literally, they don't care if it rolls, if it doesn't roll. I registered this vehicle. They never even looked at it. <laughs> it's crazy. I'm like, what? Like, there's no, wow, they don't care. They just, here, pay yeah. your fee and you run it. Uh, I mean, you know, to tell you, these are death traps no matter what you do. Because just their class, their, I mean, there's no crush zones. They're, you know, especially now that you convert them to electric, they can move, they can go. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> you know, so they move. They they move, and that's not a good thing. I think the the safety, the original Volkswagen safety features, it was an undersized engine, <laughs> underpower yeah, engine. Yeah. <laughs> well, so the, you, the thing is, I mean, people have been putting V8s in like and hot rodding vehicles to go faster uh, since vehicles, you know, were invented. I mean, hot yeah. rodding was invented in day two of the invention of the automobile. Because <laughs> yes. like, uh, on day two, that guy woke up and thought, I know how to make it go faster. And that's when hot rodding was born. Yeah. Yeah. So people have been putting V8s in like, uh, you know, buses since the 60s to make them go fast. So that's nothing new, putting a Tesla motor and making it go fast. But yeah. what's different is the fact that if you open up, um, you know, the battery box and touch A and B, you will die because it's yeah. 400 volts and that's going to end badly. And yeah. that's the difference is, you know, uh, most people that work on like V8s and things like that, they know not to stick your finger into a fan belt. They know not to smoke a cigarette when they're like, you know, uh, working on a fuel tank. But most people that are converting a car to electric, you know, they know that electric will give you a shock, but are they really trained in high voltage like uh, systems? Probably not, but they yeah. think they know what they're doing. And that's the bit that worries me in the DIY market is that a lot of people so far have been fairly lucky. Um, yeah. but, um, regulation, I think, is a good thing um, uh, in, in the DIY electric vehicle market because it's it, there will be a, a one, you know, there'll be an accident. And, yeah. uh, you know, it'll end badly for somebody. And that's not going to be good. I mean, for instance, our battery box boxes here, they're sealed. So somebody can't just like get into the batteries and go, oh, I wonder what's in here. Or, or some child pl playing in the car can't lift up a thing and go, oh, look, what's that? Touch, touch, bang. You yeah. know, so our battery boxes, they're sealed. And even if you like, you know, go out of your way to pull some things off and take a connector out, the chances are you still won't get a shot. So yeah. Uh, yeah, if you put the the contactors inside, that means they're off. So that means even the 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 connectors or the pins that are there, they're not electrified, right? If you disconnect yeah, the, I mean, you the data need, cables, you literally need to go out of your way to try to actually get a shock. And I mean, out of your way, because <laughs> I mean, if I grab one of the uh, uh, connectors, I mean, you've got to stick your fingers. You know, you mean if I grab one here. 
think back to the office and show you now. Oh yeah. So yeah, it, it, it's um, it's a big thing. We're, I mean, you got to bear in mind we're we're not DIY hobbyists anymore for what we do in my business. We're, we're essentially converting cars for clients that you know will be expecting you know to be able to get in their car and drive it as and a daily driver like I do with no yeah. reliability or safety issues. So you've got connectors like this, for instance. So this is one of the main sort of like high voltage connectors. So this would be sitting on the battery box. Yeah. And essentially that would have your, um, you know, 70 mil cable or whatever coming out of the airbags there. And essentially if I undo the clasp, it's a two handed job, but essentially that goes on there like that. And then that's then clips down onto yeah. it. Yeah. Now, even if somebody took that off and you looked inside there, if you touch that and that, it's not a problem, but if you, you literally have to stick something in there and in there and then touch those together to get a shock. Yeah. So you, you've got to go out of your way to kind of like, you know, get a shock if you like. But having, yeah. having said that, actually, I just realized if that happens, then you've got, um, I don't know if you can quite see it, you still won't get a shock because essentially there's a little sensor in there and there's a little wire at, at the other side. And if it detects that this isn't connected, then it will internally, the contact will make sure that this is dead. It's so yeah, even, it's open. even then you can't uh, get a shock. Yeah. Um, so you've, you've literally got to kind of get your tools out or cut into the box to be able to, um, you know, have a bad day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's the same thing with these uh, EVSC charging cords. they are smart cords that they're off. They only turn on if they have communication with the car and then they say, Hey, you're a car. Okay. You're going to charge. How much power do you need? And then they turn on. So if you drive over that cord and you cut in half, you won't get electrocuted. That's the whole reason for having that box in your garage that yeah. has contactors so in, in there. In the, in the um, charge cables, you've got what's called pilot and proximity. Yeah. So you, and, and the pilot and proximity, sorry, the, 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 the pilot and the proximity pins are a little bit longer than each other. So the proximity detects that the cable's gone in. So this one here. And then the pilot does what a pilot does. It takes over and drives the thing. So essentially the pilot then drives and essentially decides, well, how many amps do you want? Well, I can give you this amount of amps and, you know, so on and so forth. There's a bit of handshaking going on. But yeah. if if the cable's still in the car, for instance, and this is where you get into things like um, uh, uh, safety interlocks and things like that in the vehicles, there's a lot of safety interlocks and safety systems that are in our vehicles that probably aren't in the States. Um, but some of the very basic ones, which probably are in the States, are things like a pedal interlock. So that means that if the cable's still stuck in the car and you come around the other side and you forget the cable uh, charging the car up and you turn it on, you can't drive away you because can't drive away. it yeah. knows that the cable's still in there. And yeah. there's, I think there's about eight different safety systems like that on our cars to make sure that uh, the vehicles are safe to drive uh, to drive off essentially. Yeah, yeah, that's important because not you drive away with your cord, <laughs> you rip it off the wall. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like yeah. many Americans that run with their uh with their with the, that happens every year by the way the people that put the uh the they're filling their gas gasoline right and then they, yeah. they forget about it they drive away <laughs> they totally, that happens I had, a, I had a funny conversation with somebody last year where um uh he he wanted and this is how weird electric vehicles were uh you know back when they were just starting off and we we're talking about 2016 2015 when i just started doing this i had a customer who lived uh, in france but he was british and he wanted to know um is it okay to charge up in france um and the uk um and he was like and i said yeah yeah it's fine okay the sockets might be different and a wall plug um but your charge sockets in europe are kind of standardized ish back then it was a little bit still type one type two but standardized ish but he kept on saying no no, no what i mean is is the electricity different in france compared to the uk <laughs> <It's> like, no <laughs> like, okay because my wife she filled my petrol up with diesel last year when she was in france and she broke the uh, broke the car and it was a <laughs> so and i tried to explain that you know with electric it's not like you can put in the wrong fuel electricity is electricity it goes in it's fine you can't get petrol and diesel mixed up <laughs> Well, maybe a uh, DC or AC. Maybe he was talking about that. Either no, he no, knew no. too much or he didn't know enough. 
<laughs> he, he, yeah, he probably knew enough to uh, basically confuse the hell out of himself. Yeah. And yeah, I had yeah. to bring it back to like, you know, have you got an electric toothbrush? Yes. Does it work in the UK? Yes. When he charged it up in France, does it work? Yes. It's like that. The same. <laughs> <laughs> I just left it like that. That's cool. Yeah. So are you having trouble finding techs to help you do all this stuff? Because it's no, a no. weird animal. Like, it's like you got to be a mechanic, but you also got to be into computers. And you gotta like the past, and you gotta like the future. So it's not there's not a lot of people that are like no, that, no, no, you're right. especially there's, in the states. It's hard, right? It's either, um, you're either one flavors. or the two. There's three flavors of guys we've got out in the workshop. There's uh, fabricators, so we've got really ca uh, talented fabricators that uh, make up the battery boxes and fabricate. We've got the mechanics, and the mechanics, um, you know, they do what they do. They drop out the engine gearboxes, they put in the, the motors, etc. And then we got the electrical guys, and those are the guys ah, that put them out there. Separated them. So the EV technicians, they're the guys that, um, you know, they're, they're the trouble is with the EV technicians. They're either working for Formula One teams or Jaguar or you know Nissan and places like that in corporate world, and they're pretty much uh, you know usually theoretical type guys working on laptops, etc. And they're very not hands on. And then you've got um, the DIY hobbyist, the guy that kind of has converted as a bit like me. I started like that, same with you, same with Michael. Mm -hmm. DIY hobbyists uh, that are totally hands-on and uh, maybe you know, know what they're doing uh, mechanically, but um, they're theoretical, maybe a little bit lacking. I prefer those guys. Those guys that you know, are hands-on and now we'll then get them trained up. So in the, uh, again, in the UK, there are um, training courses you go on if you're going to be working on electric vehicles. Um, so if you're working on electric vehicles, you know, you, uh, I won't show you the certificates, but you, you need to have a certificate in level two, level three, et cetera, et cetera. No way. Oh, my God. Yes, you guys are totally more uh, regulated so, over there. Okay. So we, we, I prefer to bring in people that kind of are more um, hands-on type EV technicians and then maybe train them up um, because it, I think it's harder to bring somebody that is used to sitting on the bum on a laptop talking theoretical and then put them in a workshop environment like that and say, right, okay, we're going to build a battery box. Here's some bus bars. There's some cell wires into a BMS. Like, yes, this is how we're doing it. And like, oh, well, I kind of like, you know, read books on this but i've never done it before well <laughs> yes. um, i feel more comfortable training up somebody that thinks they know what i'm doing from a diy point of view up to a more professional like um uh, you know point of view that uh, you know you're building cars for clients uh, as a business so wow. but yeah they're they're few and far between but uh, yeah right it's kind of a weird uh, it's new it's a new breed of people essentially because this this yeah. didn't exist before it's like a new market Yeah, we, we got three guys, three EV technicians here, and they're great. I mean, uh, what I like to do is uh, get people up to a certain level, and then you bring in a junior for them to train up, and then they become a little cell. So you have one cell uh, converting a, a stream of cars this way, another cell of like, you know, a, a senior and a junior guy here. So you have two or three set, um, like uh, streams of uh, cars going through the workshop. Uh, wow. Rather than everybody has to go through like me or everybody has to go through Michael or whatever. It's, yeah. you know, I still get out there to play because, you know, I don't run this uh, business to do anything other than play with cars at the end of the day. So yeah, I, you... I hate being here. I like yes. being out there. <laughs> yeah, I, I struggle with that too. I don't want to do, I don't want to build cars for other people because I want to build my own. You know, I have so many ideas and I want to do, you know, I got, I'm getting a fleet of these. I don't know. I, I sound like a broken record. Every guest that I have, I tell them. But uh, my idea is that since these are so weird, they're so expensive and there's so much work that goes into it, like their average person can't get to drive them, right? And so only people that have a lot of money and they have a lot of time and they, they you know, dump and stuff and they can wait a long time for Michael to convert there. Uh, for, so what I want to do is I want to convert a fleet of them and I want to rent them. I want to take them to Hawaii. And I want to rent them because in Hawaii, people go and drop a lot of money in rentals. And they usually rent a Land Rover. Well, not Land Rovers, like Jeeps because they can take off the top and then they could go and see the waterfalls and they could go to the beach. And I'm like, screw that. Let's take one, you know, that's electric that doesn't, you know, that is clean for the environment because it's a pretty pristine environment and it's, you know, it's, it's fragile. Yep. And it's got a ton of cars going by there and, you know, people drop a lot of money. So I'm like... 
this is a perfect uh, scenario. And then like it's they're small islands. Uh, they're sunny, so there's a good you know like a lot of solar over there, it's renewable energy. And there's a slow uh, speed limit of 35 miles uh, across all the islands. <laughs> so even brand new uh, highways are. So I'm like, it's perfect for these, you know. No one's gonna crash too too fast, I guess. You know, the yeah. the biggest thing is that they're going to like drive it off a cliff or something. <laughs> that's about it. But I'm like, that's what I want to do. I'm like, I want to retire over there and you know build a, a a fleet of them, take them over there and just rent them and manage them or whatever. That's that's my plan. You know? It's too late now, Jay. Who you told the world, mate? Everybody's gonna do that now. <laughs> you should well, get them quiet. <laughs> good luck. Uh, you know, I'm already on my way. I have four of them already. You know, oh, <laughs> and yeah. I already got the shop here. But except now, I'm doing the business side of things, and I'm I'm showing people how to make batteries for yeah. themselves. Because here's a real problem. I mean, there's not just here in a lot of places where you had to take control of your own energy, right? And so it's going so great. I mean, and I'm getting like these truckloads full of batteries, and then I'm making videos and selling them, and it's great. I'm making more money than I've ever had. But I'm stuck running a business now. I'm like, ah, I can't go and play with my cars. My shop right now is full of, like, pallets of batteries. You know, it's like crazy. You know, it's like, get these things out of here. So I just got another space, and we're going to push that, all that stuff over there so I can still have my shop over here where I can you, shoot you, videos. You've got to play with your toys. Jay, who, um, there's a saying in the UK, he who dies with the most toys wins. So you, <laughs> there you go. You've got, you, you've got to have your toys and... It's weird. I come into the workshop on the weekends and stuff because, you know, th this is just uh, an extension of my workshop at home. So some <laughs> yes. sometimes I come in here and, and, and you look at I look around and think, who are all these guys in my like workshop? Get out. This is my this is my toy shop. You know, <laughs> you can find your own toy shop. So yeah. you know, it, with my uh, workshop at home now, it's kind of just turned into a garage where I because you know what it's like with your bus probably. They're so reliable. You know, the days of me messing around with like, you know, my Porsche 914 or my Beetle through the weekend, tuning the uh, Delorto carbs or whatever, those days are gone. And like, uh, it, which is great because now I can just get out there and actually drive and enjoy the vehicle. Yeah. But, you know, so my tinker time in the garage has gone down and my driving the vehicle and enjoying it has gone up. Yeah. But I like to tinker. So what, I, what do I do? Well, I now come in here and tinker through the weekend on like, you know, customers' cars or like my Land Rover um, uh, build, which I'm doing for myself now. So yeah. I've still, I still got my toys that I tinker with, that's for sure. All yeah. Always with. Yeah, I never, I was never interested in like converting other, like many cars, right? I never wanted to own many cars because I'm like, why do you, you can own, why do you need more than one, you know? But now it gives me a purpose, right? Like this, if I'm going to build a fleet and I'm getting crazy ideas, like, oh, yes, I want a Land Rover. Yes, I want a, a Bug. Yes, I want the whatever, you know? I want a DeLorean, you know? Because yeah. people would rent that, you know? So it gives me a purpose to to keep converting and keep working on cars. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. it's just all, it's not just me trying to, you know, be selfish and have all the cars in the world. I'm, it's it's a, for a purpose, you know. I, well, that's how I justify it in my head. You're you're a bit more like a, a build rather than buy type of guy like me. I, I've always liked yeah. to build my own cars. I mean, I, uh, since what am I now? Forty seven. Since the age of seventeen, I've had uh, Beetles, and I still oh, have. Okay. I still have the original VW Beetle that I had when I was seventeen. I still own it. Really? Um, yeah. You, oh, you got to see it. Early uh, stuff or uh, or or sixties or do you have any sixty eight? Sixty eight. Oh, look at that! Yeah. Oh my God, is that is is the top a little? It's yeah. Yeah, you really chopped tough. it. Yeah. Look it's at that. that. There's a better better photo over here. You'll see see it. So it's, it's um. So I, I've uh, depillared it. So I've taken the pillar out here. Yes, look at that. Uh, I've roof chopped it, so it's like. Uh, five inches lower at the front, four at the back. Um, wow. but this, this I've had since I was 17 and I did most of the work on it myself. Um, and that's sitting in my garage at home. Um, and then the other, the other car I had is, uh, here you go. This is my uh, Porsche 914 race car that I had. Um, so I, I rallied this in the British Historic Rally Championship for about oh. seven years. Wow, and look at that. So that, that that's uh, I'm you know an ex petrol head at the end of the day. So since the age of seventeen, I've been messing around with old cars, 
Um, and people get me wrong when they say, oh, you just some like a uh, hippie trying to like hug trees and save the planet. Nope. <laughs> uh, and don't get me wrong. I mean, it's important uh, to have zero emissions and, uh, you know, I don't um, take that lightly. It's a very important um, thing to um, be ecologically conscious and aware uh, in this day and age. But that's not why I started doing this. I started doing this because I wanted a more reliable classic car as a daily driver. And it just so happens that a, a nice side benefit of that means that it's zero emissions. And when yeah. people say it's not zero emissions because you're just moving the problem down the, down the wires to the power station. Not really, because in the UK and most you know, countries around the world are decarbonizing their um, national the grids. Mm -hmm. So in and the in the UK, UK, it's it's one of them that it's they're really far advanced, uh, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. They're near I mean, they're near zero emissions now. Oh no, they're, they're way off zero emissions. But I mean, um, you know, there, there are certain you know, for instance, we, we we don't use much coal anymore. I think last year, two percent of the electricity that went onto the grid was from coal power. Uh, two percent. Wow. Yeah, because yeah, you have the offshore wind. Uh, I was talking to Ellen uh, Robert Llewellyn. Not yep. too long ago, and he was telling me about these things that they have over there in the ocean, right? Exactly, and they're yeah. massive, uh, well, you know, we're, generators. We're, we're, we're an island, so you know we, we've got lots of winds uh, on our coast. I mean, here in Wales, I mean, we, uh, I live in like a very hilly, mountainous sort of like terrain. We've got wind turbines everywhere. I've got a, about a hundred wind turbines on the top of my hill. Like I'm talking big ones, not like small ones. Wow. Um, so we've got plen plenty of wind uh, generation and renewables. Um, and, you know, it's, r it's, it's roughly uh, um, around about, um, I think it's over a third of electricity comes from renewables now in the UK. And I think it's getting more, more towards half now. And we still rely a lot of, uh, on gas turbines. Um, but um, yeah, the decarbonization in, in the uh, in the UK is massive. So there's a lot, lot less um, carbon emissions that comes from uh, uh, electric vehicles compared to petrol. Yeah, and and, and here in California, you could you can debunk that that statement or that argument because you're like, yes, it's true, but I could also just charge of my roof solar. Well, that's exactly. enough. That's what I, do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've, I've got uh, solar panels on my garage um, at home. I've got battery storage at home, um, and you know, I've got uh, three electric cars. I've got my Beetle, uh, my bus, and my wife drives a Model Three. Wow! Um, so, we're, so you we're, still have, but you still have some some gas cars. No. No, you got rid of your your Porsche. Is not no longer. Oh yeah, I, I sold that. It, it, it was. I very rarely sell any of my toys because, as I say, he who dies with the most toys wins. Yeah. Uh, so to sell one of my toys is rare, but the problem is with that that that. Um, and I, I'm looking up looking up the picture up on the wall in case you're wondering who, what I'm looking at. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, I sold that um, because it's a rally car, and it was. Um, if you build a race car, you build it for the regulations that you run in that championship, and to turn it into a road car. It was not really possible. Ah, um, so, so you couldn't I drive to, it. <laughs> I had to. I turned it into a bit of a track day car for a year to try to see if I can keep it. It just wasn't really suitable. So I sold it back into the rally community so that somebody could keep on rallying it. Ah, um, okay. But yeah, no, we we've been a pure electric family now for I don't know a year, or, completely a year or two at least. Wow, look at that. my wife. Um, was the last one to be converted with a Tesla. I think she's had it um, just over a year now. Model 3. Model 3, yeah. yeah. Just a base model, Model 3. Not long range, not super powerful. I yeah, mean, that's what I, my wife drives. The same. Yeah, it's perfect. I think yeah. of Robert Llewellyn has the same one. In fact, he's got a black one exactly the same as my wife's. Yeah, black um, one too. <laughs> they're, they're fine. The base model, Model 3, is fast enough. It's no. fast enough, it's fancy enough, it's a great car. I mean, it's... <laughs> and when people say, oh, well, electric cars, uh, you know, they're not practical, or you, you can have electric cars as long as you've got a petrol car in the family. No. no. I mean, we, we, we do a lot of miles. I mean, my wife's uh, mother lives a long way away. I mean, you're talking many, many hours drive. And with the Tesla, you've got probably one stop, and within 20 minutes, I mean, we got kids, so you have to stop somewhere for them to get out at least to go to the toilet or eat a burger or whatever by the time you've done that 
it's charged up and away you go again. So there's yeah. no, I mean, people might think that electric cars are impractical, but honestly, petrol, yeah, I think it's changing quickly. And I think people are still a little bit behind. I think California is not such a big deal because we're everywhere, like literally down my street. Everybody's got Teslas now. And it's so strange because seven years ago, I'm the only crazy talking about electric cars, driving an electric car, right? And they're, yeah. I'm like, it's an experiment. I'm just some weirdo that builds his own car with the batteries. Like, what the hell? Now oh, everybody's still driving. still weirdo in my eyes, mate. <laughs> <laughs> now it's like every, every, my neighbors have them. You're yeah. like, what? Like, that's crazy. Uh, mass adoptions happening. Even my mum, uh, uh, I won't mention her age, but she's, uh, she's not young. Um, she's uh, considering an electric car now. And, you, uh, you know, for, for no other reason than it's just easier to drive for somebody that, you know, uh, okay, automatics are fairly easy to drive, but, you know, you still need to go. Single to gear, place. though. Yeah. That's, but, a, that's a weird thing because I, I have a truck, right? Like that little pickup truck. It's a, it's a Toyota or whatever, and it's automatic. But that thing sucks. Like uh, now that I drive electrics and then I, you could hear all the slippage of the yeah. gears, you know, and yeah. and it's yeah. so annoying driving that thing. It, there's no better than a single gear. You're always engaged. Well, uh, and you don't have to shift the, anything. The biggest, um, like, uh, like comparison I have like that was a motorbike. I mean, okay. you know, I, I've, I've got my, my pickup the same as you, but my, mine's the electric, um, uh, uh, crew cab pickup. And, you know, I've got a tow bar on there. I use that to take uh, some of the vehicles to the paint shop. So I tow with it as well. So it's, it's an all around practical vehicle for me. We go camping in it, surfing in it. I use it for family, we use it for work, towing the lot. But um, the biggest like um, uh, comparison uh, or, or the biggest, you know, uh, surprise I had was getting on a, a petrol motorbike and then getting on an electric one because I, I don't have a bike license. Uh, my, my father rides motorbikes. I got on the back of his, like um, he has a Yamaha. And like those things, like, like in your, you're describing your pickup, uh, um, there, there's this like jerkiness when it changes gear, but in a motorbike, it's like aggressive. It's like, uh, and then you change gear. Oh, and then you're off again. Oh, and then you're off again. Oh, and your next go, like, is this normal? And, motor, and motorbikes supposed to be like this? And it's, oh yeah, wow. yeah, that's what it's like. And then I built an electric motorbike, which um, you, you might not have seen. And, and that, as you say, it's single gear. Single gear. There's, there's no clutch. There's like a front brake and a rear brake. And, you know, your, your feet are essentially doing nothing. They are just sitting on pegs. Yeah. And when I, when I built this and my dad came around, because he, he's the bike and not me, he came around to ride it. He was like, okay petrol's dead to me I need to get <laughs> like a so um, no way so, you, it, it, so this is um uh this is a royal oh there enfield. you go uh -huh. so this is um a petrol um original royal enfield so okay. we took took one of those and it's, they've been built since the 1950s and 60s they're still built now in india and um, so so we took a one of those motorbikes and then we converted it to electric and we essentially made. Wow, look at that. Let's see if I can, there you go. And then we made that. Wow, look at that. So that's that's an electric version of essentially that one there. Uh, and it's got single gears, there's no gears. It's actually a hub motor. So that's a hub motor. motor. <laughs> Mot motors in there, there's no chain to maintain, there's no oil, uh, it's just twist and go. Wow. But it's so easy to ride and so smooth. Even even I can ride it, and I'm an idiot. Wow! You know, I just had uh, Charlie Borman. Oh, cool! Uh, he, yeah, I mean, I was like, so why why electric? You know, and they're like, oh, it's just a crazy idea and stuff. And now they just finished the thing, right? I mean, that was a year ago or whatever, and, and the show just aired, finished airing not too long ago. But yeah, it's, he's like, I love these. Now he's driving a Tesla, I think. <laughs> So yeah, he's converted, I mean, you know. Just like, once you go electric, you don't go back. I mean, who, who who do you know that's gone electric and gone, you know what? It's not really for me. I'm going to go back to petrol. Yeah. It doesn't happen. So once you go electric, so. you don't go back. Yeah. No, you got to. There's nothing. I mean, noise, I guess, if you love the noise. But, you know, it's uh, who likes the noise. So I guess it's nice. You know, when you're, you're inside the car and you're going, 
The noise is fine. It's just not fine for everyone else <laughs> that's not inside the car. <laughs> if yeah. you're at the track, the, the sound, I, I've been in a NASCAR car with a NASCAR driver. It's it's nice. It's like you feel the power. You hear the power. You know, that whole thing. But I've also been on a track uh, with, in a Tesla Model S, you know, and I'm like, that's just as thrilling. That is just as powerful. That's just as exciting. Yeah. As uh, a NASCAR car, you know, it's just yeah, we, like we, we've converted uh, two Ferraris, and you know, the Ferrari is known for its V8 and its noise and stuff like that. Uh, two, two three oh eights like Hutch and uh, Michael mm -hmm. uh, did that three oh eight a number of years back. Yeah, and uh, so we put Tesla drive units in it. So we put a large Tesla drive unit. It was naught to sixty in like three seconds. It was nuts. Um, so we've done two of those. And, you know, people say, oh, I miss the noise. Well, you know, do you? I mean, <laughs> do you want to go faster? Do you want to sound loud? <laughs> I'm not being funny, but, you know, noise is the last thing you think of when you put your foot down and do not 60 in like three seconds. And the weight distribution is better. And yeah. the, um, the way it delivers the power is better. It's smoother. Um, it handles better. The braking is better because you've got regen braking as well on top. It, Every single thing is better, 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 better. Oh, but it's the noise isn't there. Yeah. Well, you've got so many benefits that out. Yeah. So if noise is your biggest thing, then yeah. put a like soundtrack of a Ferrari in the in the uh, cassette player and turn it up and enjoy. It. Be, put a BMW speaker. You know the B, new BMWs have that speaker that it comes yeah, out of yeah. a tailpipe. That's, <laughs> that's great. That, uh, this, the whole no, noise augmentation thing gets me. I think this is hilarious. Yeah. Uh, it's it's just people will look back in like five ten years time and go. What? what were you, you guys you, doing? You were putting petrol engine noises into electric cars. Isn't that like <laughs> putting horse noises onto a petrol car? <laughs> yeah. Like, who puts like a, a, a noise of a who puts a noise of like a, a DC ten propeller onto a jet airplane? Nobody does yeah, that. No. Well, it would be more like uh, like adding a scent of the of the like of the horse farting. Yeah. <laughs> right. Something that's completely useful, useless, because the noise is useless. Like, what do you uh, need the noise for? May, maybe I should uh, on the uh, split screen. I should dip like uh, one of those uh, air fresheners in the engine oil and then, like, hang it from hang it from the uh, mirror and just have that like, old smell. So when you when you put the heater on, it blows the like petrol smell and exhaust fumes through the heater. There you go, man. We could we can make a product, and I can probably yeah. sell it. <laughs> Petrol, petrol, and like uh, 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 petrol fumes smelling air freshness. There yes. you go. Te Tesla, Tesla owners will just lap it up. Uh, yeah. Oh well. Hey. Well, listen. It's very good to talk to you. Uh, pretty exciting what you guys are doing over there. Uh, you got to catch the the TV show. Definitely, we're gonna now that we know that it's on Apple TV. Uh, pretty cool. exciting and pretty, you know, pretty proud of you guys because you guys are making the TV show that we wanted to make. It didn't happen for us, but you guys are doing it over there. You're doing pretty cool cars, uh, well, and it was fun talking to you. Talking thanks, shop. Dave. I mean, equally, likewise, I've been a fan of yours as well. I mean, I tried to build a power wall at home, and unfortunately, the business took off. So eventually, uh, I just uh, bit the bullet and bought a Tesla power wall. But you just uh, did, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's. I mean, there's no better power wall than the real power wall. But when you can't get that, you know, you got you yeah, got to get you got to DIY something. And then the yeah. other thing is that. Uh, you're also keeping it from being going into the landfills and being, you know, so there's many re levels of why you should DIY. And there's plenty of people that are DIYing this. I, I'm blown away at the amount of people that send me pictures and, you know, of, well, it's, it's of taking systems. Off. I mean, taking off, definitely, yeah. I mean, yeah. The, the, future, the future is electric. The, the, the quicker we stop burning stuff uh, on this planet, the better. The better we are. Yeah. And so, we're all doing our little jobs. You want to plug in your socials. Uh, where yeah. can people see your your creations, your so, work? Uh, we, we try to keep the social media ticking over every few days of builds we got going out there. But as you can see, we've got a lot going out there. So yeah. quite often I miss a few days. But yeah, we're on uh, social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, it's uh, it's probably easiest just to go to the website and just scroll down to the bottom to see which ones we are. But it's electricclassiccars.com or .co.uk. And uh, Facebook and uh, Instagram, it's just uh, at uh, Electric Classic Cars. I think Twitter is the only different one. That's Elec 
classic cars because we couldn't fit it all in. <laughs> okay. Well, that's easy enough. Electricclassiccars.com. I mean, like, you, you got the good name. <laughs> yeah, <there you> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so weird that the name was still available. It was when I uh, when I first set the business up. I thought, what should I call myself? Well, we convert classic cars to electric, so we build electric classic cars. I wonder if that's available. Oh, bloody hell, it's available. <laughs> click, click, click. <laughs> I can't even get jehugarcia.com. Oh, really? <laughs> it's taken. I was like bidding on it, and someone outbid me. Apparently, yeah, someone wants it more than me. That's because it should be the J. <laughs> J. Garcia. Maybe one J. Who sat Garcia, and that's you. It should be the Maybe. J. Maybe. Who Garcia. I got I got to check that. Oh, forget it. Someone else already bought it because they heard it right now. <laughs> 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 well, Reg Richard, reg register it quick. Yeah, register right now. Go. Um, it's been super nice talking to you. If I'm ever in the UK, I will pay a visit to you. Definitely. Uh, and if you're in the States, do make sure and reach out to me. Come check will out my, my shop, my Volkswagen shop that I got going here. Uh, and uh, we'll go for a ride in California coastline in electric Excellent. cars. Hopefully, I'll have. <laughs> That's Hopefully, I caught up with you guys and came over to like uh, California and San Diego and got some sun. So come over and see Michael. Come over and see you. It's uh, yeah. As soon as this COVID thing blows over, yes, yeah, I'll, I'll come over there and get a tan for a few weeks, mate. There you go. Yeah. Hopefully, it's happening this year and not the yeah. next, right? Uh, we're 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 hoping here for a better year. Uh, but thank you. I want to thank you for that, and it's been enjoy enjoyable talking to you. And we'll see you on the next one, okay? Nice one. Thanks, Dave. Take All care. Right. Okay, have a good night.